Good morning, parents. Um, my name is Virginie Turner, and um, I let go of my um, child two years ago now. Uh, it was in August 2020. And um, the photo you see here is the photo of Marilou um, climbing the stairs to um, the airport to take a plane by herself um, from Savannah, uh, Savannah Room Airport. Um, and obviously we were facing some really unique circumstances, so hopefully you won't have to um, to, um, to go through this. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, like everybody else, we went through a lot of um, emotional uh, turmoils, let's say, um, because we had to realise that Mario was not a child anymore. And it's, um, it's really tough. And this is why I added this, uh, this poem. A friend of mine actually reminded me of it recently. And she said, you should, you should share this poem with people. These are not our children. They are just, we're just here to support them. We made them and they have to go. Um, and, and I know that um, that is really, really tough uh, to let go of your child. So um, because we couldn't go, I'm just going to go through the practical aspect. So because obviously our circumstances were very different, yours will not be the same. Uh, but just to let you know that, you know, because we could not go with Marilou um, in August 2020, there was a lot of things that we hadn't planned and uh, practical things that maybe you might want to uh, think about um, if you're in your 12, um, to, if you have children in your 12, to do maybe now, this summer, is to set up a bank account because it was extremely difficult for Marilou to set up a bank account uh, when she got there by herself. And um, maybe think about, you know, doing all the little things like NHS registration, uh, registration with a GP uh, or a dentist. That's just a practical little thing. So I know that you, you you will do it and you will go with your children, but we had planned to do that that, that summer with Mary Lou and obviously couldn't and she had to, to do that by herself. So in this presentation, I'm just going to go through a few it's my advice, you take it or leave it, don't worry. Um, I won't take it personally. I think we all have different values. We all love our children, uh, but we have different values sometimes. And I just want to give you my my hint on 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 things. So uh, if I can start with, um, be careful with the texting and incessantly contacting your children. Try to remember a little bit how what it was like to go to university yourself uh, a few years ago, <laughs> a few decades ago. We didn't have uh, phones. We are maybe kept in touch with our parents with a, a phone call once a week. Um, but we didn't have text. We didn't have messaging. We just had, you know, talking to someone on the phone. And sometimes we didn't have personal phones or, or anything like that. You, you are the adult in the room, you are, and you have to control this um, urge to um, maybe be needy and contact the, your children all the time to see how they are, uh, because actually that causes them a lot of stress. Um, so I learned that. I learned to control my, my texting, my messaging. You have to be strong for them. And, uh, and I know it's hard because you just want to know what's happening. We, we are so used to knowing what's happening in their life here at Patna, um, particularly in the last two years where that, you know, it was very much, um, a home thing. Um, so yes, try to let go of that. Um, try to not text them all the time because it is a, a source of stress for them. Um, the next thing I would say is, that by not texting, by not being in touch with them all the time, you are telling them they are growing up and they're becoming adults themselves. And I think, you know, it's really important that they learn how to problem solve. Um, so Mary Lou, for instance, had to um, register on the NHS in the time of a pandemic, which took a year. Yeah, um, she had to register with a GP and she couldn't get out of a hall of residence. Um, she still doesn't have a dentist in the UK. Um, she uh, has a treatment when she comes back to, to uh, Thailand. So think about all these things they have to do, they've never had to do before. And it's really important for them to do it because um, that's how you learn. Um, so yes, that's one thing I would say, you know, uh, encourage them to fill in forms that they've never filled before, which are really pernickety and really not very clear to someone who's just arriving in the, in the country. So that's one thing I would advise you to do. Just let them get on with it. Of course, you can give them advice, but don't ask them all the time. Have you done this? Have you done that? Occasionally ask them, you need to register. Have you done this? And it's very frustrating because they don't do it. <laughs> Not as quickly as you would like them to. Um, so yes, resilience. Um, it's it's um, 
it's important to let them make mistakes. Because remember, being at university yourself, how many mistakes did you make? Uh, a lot, <laughs> I did. Um, so make sure that, you know, that develops the critical thinking, that develops their way of, you know, handling uh, difficulties. And that really will help them in the future. So, of course, always be there for them. Always be there to listening to their problems, giving them advice if they ask, but let them get on with it. Okay, I think it's really important um, as part of you know growing up and becoming independent. Um, um, one of the things that we went through with Marilou in the first year was uh, culture shock. Um, it was dif it was difficult circumstances. She was in lockdown in a hall of residence in Manchester. Uh, so just to give you some context, I'm French. My husband is Scottish, so we've never lived in England. Um, and coming out of her cozy nest in Patana, she found people obnoxious, very aggressive. Uh, you know, there was a lot of drugs, a lot of alcohol in these halls of residence, particularly in those days, because those children were stuck in a room and um, it was really tough for them. So um, Marie found it extremely difficult to be around people like that. She, um, she spent most of, most of her time in her room. So culture shock is really difficult um, because you, Marie in particular, she thought she was coming back to her country um, and um, she found it extremely, extremely hard. So be there for them, listen to them, tell them it's not going to last. Um, it's a, just a question of developing some a routine, some habits. Um, I'm happy to say that now Marie in the second year has left the role of residence. She's found some friends. Uh, in um, her course and around her course. And um, they're now renting a house. There's five of them in a house and they're the happiest kids. And they have a little garden, they do barbecues and they just watch uh, Netflix together. So it's it's lovely, you know, it's really nice to see that she's found friends by herself. I didn't help her. She's found them. She, you know, communicated with people. She's searched and, you know, created this cozy nest for themselves. So really proud of her for that. Um, the other thing is that they might not like the course. They might just realize this is not for me. Um, and I think sometimes you need to listen to them. Um, but, you know, um, it's normal. Give them time to go through the course the first year, and then you can have a conversation at the end of the year and decide on whether you sh they should continue there or, or not, or find alternatives. Um, but particularly in the in terms of context and, and the, the place they are, it's really important to give them time to under, to let them know, just give yourself time, give yourself time, hang in there, you'll be fine, um, and just support them, basically. Um, I think sometimes we forget about ourselves. We we so focused on our own children, and I'm very grateful that I'm a, I'm, I'm working uh, because I think if I had not been working, I would have found the first year extremely difficult. So um, can I advise you as a parent, from a parent to another parent, to look after yourself, look after your mental well-being because it's that's how you get strong. Um, some people find new hobbies. Um, we've got a friend who's doing Reiki now. Um, some people, you know, pick up some sports. Look after your partner. Look after yourself. Of course, if you've got other children, look after your children. But what I'm saying is, look after yourself because this is this is it. You're going to be one day. It's going to be you and your husband, or, or your partner, or you know, uh, or maybe just you alone. And you have to deal with it. You have to hang in there. So can I strongly advise you to um, to look after yourself? Um, uh, yes, so one thing I was, I was thinking of was uh, really encouraging you to be a good listener. That's how not to encroach on their life and how not to, um, to be too intrusive and invasive. Okay. Let them get, make their mistakes. Uh, always be there to listen to them. Um, make sure that you are giving them feedback if they ask for it. Um, you know, don't, don't tell them what to do all the time, but just be a good listener. My daughter told me the other day, oh, I'm, I'm finishing this course and I'm going to set up my own company. And I was like, mm hmm, OK, <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> but, you know, just let, you know, let them listen. Just listen. Let them let them get on with it, you know, and maybe she will. Maybe she will. Uh, but, you know, it will de demand a lot more um, reflection than just saying, I think I'm going to do that. Uh, so just let them talk. Let them, you know, make sure that you, you are um, when you agree to meet 
it's a time when you're both available. Uh, so obviously time difference is, is an issue sometimes. Um, for us, it's a Sunday night for, in, in Bangkok and it's lunchtime for her because she doesn't get up before lunchtime on a Sunday. So if I want her to be awake, uh, I've got to wait for that. And uh, make sure that you're looking at it. I mean, we're so lucky to have smartphones and we can see each other. Um, it's amazing. That's really a lifesaver, I think, to see how they're growing and they're changing and their outfits, their clothes. Yes, it's um, they, they are growing up and they're changing and they're becoming their own person. And it's really important to respect that. And I know that sometimes it's really hard, but I think we have to do it. Um, and that's about all I've got to say really for you. Um, I hope, I think I've covered a little bit of, um, of everything. Um, just make sure that, you know, uh, this is my family. This is my uh, circumstances. These, these are my circumstances. Some, you know, the way we dealt with it. I'm not saying it's perfect, um, but it's one way of doing it. So um, I hope um, I hope you have a great uh, send off and uh, wish you good luck. Bye bye.